Tonight, the episode you've been waiting for. On this last episode with uh, where we discuss Marie-Julie Jaini, we are discussing heaven's messages regarding sacramentals and um, remedies for the end times. Stay with us. Welcome, everyone, to Secrets from the Vatican Archives. Tonight is a very special episode. We're going to do things a little bit differently. We're going to do it very casual this evening. We're going to be discussing Marie-Julie Jaini's remedies, sacramentals, and instruments for protection in the end times. And uh, as, as usual, we have our esteemed guest, um, Xavier Reyes Eral. <laughs> Sorry, Xavier. Welcome to the show. And um, thank you so much for joining us again today. Today, So Xavier is the um, Vatican detective extraordinaire. He has written this wonderful book, Revelations, which we're going to be discussing again today. And in this book, he reveals the secrets that were kept from, from us from by the Vatican when, um, where the messages of Our Lady are concerned. And so this is the only book where you will ever find this information. I really urge you to get this book. Christmas is coming. Put it on your list. Get a few copies. It's well worth it. And so tonight we discuss sacramentals. Xavier, would you start us off with a prayer? Yes. Uh, in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Pater Noster, qui es in celis, sanctificetur nomen tuum, ad veniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, secut in cielo et in terra, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, Xavier, I'm going to open the floor to you tonight. Um, tell us, what are these amazing remedies and sacramentals that our Lord has given Marie-Julie Jaini for these end times? <coughs> Very well. Well, as you've seen, Tonight, I took the liberty of uh, coming with a polo shirt because I wanted to uh, show your viewers some of the remarkable sacramentals that Marie-Julie Jeannie was asked to propagate, not only for the protection and the salvation of people's souls, but most of all, to protect them also and give them security and protections for their um, corporal uh, lives. You know? Mm -hmm. Remarkably enough, um, indeed, as we discussed before in this particular chapter of um, the series that we've been doing, is unquestionably one of the most important, and some will even say probably one of the most sensationalist of all. But it's, uh, I think it's one of the um, cornerstones uh, of the overall messages. As we've discussed before, the principal messages that we've covered was for uh, mankind to prepare spiritually for what is yet to come. Now, we were told how to protect our souls, how to protect our spirits, what to do, how to convert, and so on and so forth. Marie-Julie Jeannie was also given the full mission to invite the faithful to wear upon their persons some sacramentals, some instruments that are to protect them physically, their homes, their family members, and their property. Likewise, uh, as we will discuss later on, uh, towards the end of this show, of this episode, we will talk as well of the prophecies that the Blessed Virgin Mary in heaven uh, has entrusted to Marie-Julie Jeannie, particularly in regards to the three days of darkness, which is supposed to go forth after another period of darkness, which has, that I know of, never been mentioned before in any mm -hmm. other apparitions like that two days of darkness. There will be a preparation, a pre-warning, shall we say, of what is yet to come. And we will discuss as well 
uh, some of the instruments that heaven is asking the faithful to have during those particular difficult times. These times that will seal the chastisements as announced through Marie Julie Janie and so many other visionaries. So please do pay attention to this particular episode. This one is indeed very much like the others, but in a special way of the utmost importance. Yes. Marie Julie Janie has foretold that there will be, in this particular last chastisement, uh, some events that will characterize it and will be a point of reference in the history books. There will be such things as uh, uh, unusual rains throughout the globe. There will be uh, increase of temperatures there where it's hot, and uh, or rather there where it's cold, and a drastic drop of temperature there where it's hot. The nature, or rather nature itself, will rebel against humanity. Although humanity will uh, revolt against itself. There will be wars, as we mentioned before. There will be revolutions. There will be world protests for many countries and lack of order. These particular times we are right now living, in these most dangerous times we are living, particularly in Ukraine, when we hear all these threats and risk of nuclear war, these particular prophecies are beginning finally to make some sense. We are indeed living the times which are described in these particular pages, these particular times, no? And Marie Julie Jani invites everyone, particularly in these particular times, to wear not only the brown scapula, which is the scapula of Mount Carmel, uh, which are those of you might not know bears a tremendous promise from the Virgin Mary through one of uh, a, a heaven's saints, St. Simon Stock, an Englishman. And in 1215, the Blessed Virgin Mary did indeed uh, told St. Simon that all those who will wear the brown scapula at the moment of death with faith will never, regardless of the sins they've been guilty of, will never suffer the fires of hell. Now, I, we, as we mentioned before, there are three states of existence after death. There is heaven, purgatory, and hell. All the souls that go to purgatory are blessed souls, for indeed they will, one day or the other, finally reach heaven. It's a stage or a platform of purification where a soul cleanses itself in order to be worthy to go to heaven. Blessed Virgin May, mentioned that all those souls who wear the brown scapula will never suffer, will never be condemned to hell, but might go to purgatory for a certain amount of time. What's more, the Virgin Mary added that those who bear a particular life uh, that is congruent and in accordance with the spirit and the rules and the state of life that is one is required to live, that particular soul who wears a scapula at the moment of death will be freed from purgatory and allowed to go to heaven on the first Saturday after his or her death. It's a treasure, it a is. remarkable treasure. And the Blessed Virgin Mary asked the Marie Julie Janine to convey this particular message as well and to invite everyone to wear the brown scapula. Now, the church has allowed uh, the faithful to wear, of course, the particular cloth of Mont Carmel, but in particularly for those countries that are tropical and are hot. The Virgin has allowed the wearing of the scapular medal. Mine is extremely small. It's made of silver and belonged to one of my grandparents in France in the 1930s. No, so too small, I'm afraid, even to bring it close to the camera. However, if you look into my book, you will see an example of what it looks like. And you can buy one in any uh, religious uh, shop or store. Just keep in mind, the first, first time, if you've never worn the scapula of Mont Carmel, it must be imposed the first time around your neck by a priest. It used to be that before only a Carmelite priest was allowed to uh, put it around your neck first, but now the church has become yet more lenient and allows priests of any order to place it around you. Afterwards, if it falls, if it breaks, if you lose, loses it, you can very well buy another one and put it back upon yourself. But have it always blessed okay. by a priest. Yeah. Splendid. There's a picture. That is the medal of the brown scapula. 
Oh, Brilliant. sorry, no, that's the Sacred Heart. Oh, that's the same. The Medal of the yes. Sacred Heart is the is a medal of the Holy Scapula. <sighs> okay, so, yeah. gotcha. On one side, you find the Virgin Mary on Mount Carmel carrying the child Jesus, and on the other side of the medal, you see a picture of Jesus Christ as an adult with uh, bearing the Sacred. Well done. So, in addition of that particular scapula, this particular scapula, the purple scapula, has been requested, lovely, has been requested by the Blessed Virgin Mary. Ah. The promises of this particular scapula is likewise remarkable. The Virgin Mary has promised that all the souls who would wear it would, first of all, during those days of darkness we mentioned, and by the way, which also have been mentioned by Padre Pio, and you can see on chapter 9, under the sub-chapter of uh, Padre Pio, the statement he wrote about the description of the three days of darkness to come. Now, so those will wear it, according to the Blessed Virgin Mary, those wear it with faith, and where the homes will be able to see during those three days of darkness, as if in broad daylight. Quote, unquote. Likewise, uh, it, it is said that all the family members uh, that will wear the scapula, particularly the heads of the families memory serves, uh, will be able to protect themselves from any uh, sudden deaths, from accidents, of, from even uh, being str uh, struck from thunder. And not only will be able to protect yourself from such a thing, from such an incident, mm -hmm. but likewise, your family members, even if they do not wear it. So... Mm -hmm. As the head of my family, I'm always making sure to wear it around my neck. And remarkably enough, I'm not going to go into detail so as to try to avoid uh, sensationalism. But a couple of years ago, I was in uh, my motor car driving and uh, passing uh, a green light when incomprehensibly a uh, huge monster, multi-ton truck crossed me. I thought he was going to stop since I had a hair right away. For a, re for a reason to this day that I do not understand, collision was avoided, that it should have been. And the velocity of the two cars going towards each other should not have uh, uh, saved anyone. I still do not understand how I came in, in them intact and my car didn't even get a scratch on the truck. I do not understand it. It happened. I'm, this is my personal testimony. Um, it's amazing. I invite you to follow through. And to have indeed this, uh, to get one and to have it blessed by a priest. Now, already I can hear in my mind a lot of your uh, auditors say, where can we get such a, uh, all these things, uh, this scapula, brass, purple scapula and the brass scapula. At the end of the book, and even during the, this particular chapter, chapter two, I name uh, Mrs. Kathleen Loney, a charming American lady in Ohio who's dedicated uh, her present life and her time to sell those particular uh, sacramentals and those which I'm yet to talk about at cost. Mm. She makes no profit. She is simply a charming lady whose uh, only um, ambition is to try to help and possibly save as many people, as many souls as she's capable of doing in response to her fiat, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and uh, to Marie Julie Jenny, in a way. She has a great devotion to her. Her email address is conveyed on chapter two of the book. And likewise, on at the very end of the book, if you go on the table of contents at the very beginning, you will find it. You cannot miss it. In fact, we added it in the description of this video. So just look under the video and you'll find it there as well. Mm -hmm. It's <laughs> lovely. Yeah. Well done. So, uh, this, these are some of those particular promises. Likewise, protection against chastisements and disease. It's, I read that it also, it'll, it'll give us light when everybody will be in darkness. Yes, exactly. Uh, this will permit those who wear it to see during the three, during the two and three days of darkness as in broad daylight. Mm -hmm. This is quite a remarkable promise as well. But you have to leave, to wear it with uh, with faith. One of the messages that struck me very much, uh, Monique, when I read all the, this tremendous collection of messages, revelations, 
was the fact that on one instance, as we mentioned last week, there will be refugees. One of them, probably according to Blessed Virgin Mary, to Marie Julie Jenny, the safest of them all, will be in the in the area of Brittany in France. But the Virgin Mary said that Brittany were those by those who heard of them, but that uh, are impious and not faithful to nothing, to no avail, either going to Brittany or to where those particular sacramentals and the ones that I'm yet to talk about will serve them. They will, you, they will not survive those particular mm -hmm. moments as no one can fool God. Conversion must be sincere, must be from the heart and without fear. Must be a conversion of the of love, conversion of the soul above all. You know? mm -hmm. So that is one of the things that uh, Marie Julie Jenny is echoing and requesting a fellow Christians to wear. Likewise, and that is the reason why I'm wearing today not my brilliant <laughs> tie and shirt blazer, is to show you the medals that I wear. Some would say that I look like a Russian marshal with all these medals, but I couldn't, I couldn't take it seriously. Nevertheless, there is another medal, or rather cross, that splendid that the Virgin Mary is asking everyone to wear. It's called the. It has uh, various names, but this particular cross, the Blessed Virgin Mary, said would protect uh, those from the chastisement, from disease, from the punishment that rightfully is to fall upon mankind. This particular uh, cross is called the cross of pardon, likewise the cross of salvation, the cross of holy protection, and the cross that calms plagues. That's the literal translation of the French names of this particular cross. This cross, for those of you who will be able to see it, let me take it off, show it, and try to show it better to the camera. We'll have, as you can see, a white, very white flame in the center. Our Lord and the Blessed Virgin Mary, or rather have, has explained to Marie Julie Jani that this particular cross, this particular flame, is a statement to all those who wear it, stating that indeed all those who wear it with faith and devotion are indeed children of the flame, children of the Spirit of God. Likewise, one of the promises that that bears out that comes with this particular sacramental that also must be blessed by a priest is this: the time will come when indeed priests will not be available or will be scarce. They will hide or they will be persecuted, and to receive the sacrament of confession will be practically impossible. The promise that was given through Marie Julie Janie is this. All those who will wear this cross around your neck will touch it or even will kiss it, will receive pardon as in confession of all your venial sins, not mortal sins, venial sins. No. Mm. Likewise, you will note that there is a prayer in French that is uh, engraved in the back of this particular cross. And the prayer... I translate it and goes as such. He says the following. O God, crucified Savior, set me ablaze with love, faith, and courage for the salvation of my brothers. Now, this message and this particular gift was given by our Lord Jesus Christ to Marie-Julie Janie on July the 20th, 1882. Extraordinary. But the gifts from heaven do not stop it. In addition to the cross of salvation, the cross of pardon, in addition to the purple scapula and the brown scapula, the Blessed Virgin Mary in heaven invites everyone to wear upon their bo uh, bodies, upon their persons, the medal of Our Lady of the, uh, of the Good God. No? Oh, your pictures are much better than mine. That's exactly it. Now, with this particular medal, the Virgin Mary invites not only the grown-ups, the adults, to wear them, but likewise to have them worn by your children, particularly your youngest children. 
for this particular metal is to preserve one from losing one's um how do you say purity purity of soul no uh, and it comes also with an engraved prayer in the back and it states um O oh, you virgin most holy who have smashed the head of the serpent God, keep our faith and the innocence of our little children o crooks ave which means uh, hell to the to the cross to the cross this of course naturally must indeed likewise be blessed by a priest everything must be blessed by a priest these particular sacramentals uh, the medal of aid of good god the cross of the pardon the purple scapula were approved and permitted to be spread through the local archbishop of Nantes who had jurisdiction in 1876 over La Frode and the village of Blain therefore of Marie Julien and he informally through a particular letter approved as we mentioned in the very first episode of uh, Marie Julien he approved and recognized the supernatural nature coming from God that Marie Julien was a, a victim of the soul victim of for indeed she offered herself as a soul victim for the conversion of sinners and for the conversion of humanity all together mm -hmm. so in addition of this whole thing and the brown scap the blessed virgin mary from marie julieni has also invited and recommended everyone to wear upon themselves as well the miraculous medal and also the medal of saint benedict which is supposed to protect one from the attacks of the enemies the medal of the miraculous of the miraculous medal from the rue du bac from paris is of the utmost importance it comes and brings a promise of protection and deliverance from the attacks of the evil one now, so those particular sacramentals are of the utmost importance furthermore and since i wear two cords the one that are of marie julieni and another one that i never separate even under the shower i wear the miraculous medal naturally mm -hmm. that i bought it in the rue du bac in paris where catherine labouret saw uh, the blessed virgin mary the medal of the brown scapula and a crucifix with a corpus which also we are invited to wear everything to be worn and blessed by a priest this particular cross i'm wearing is a cross of saint john of arc let me see if i can get it out and show it to you i'm very proud of it the cross of my family and uh, this cross was well, the cross of the region of lorraine it was the cross of saint john of arc like was of free france at the second world war this particular cross as you see i took with me during a pilgrimage in the holy land and it touched the place where our lord was born i placed it in the hole where his cross was placed and it i placed it uh, upon the stone Uh, of the holy sepulcher where our lord lied and rose and resurrected so this particular cross as you can imagine has a great deal of uh, value to me and i hope one day i will be buried with it uh, to that, to that effect <laughs> and to that effect i ask you to take this uh, all of you who are watching this particular show live and those who will watch it later to take this more seriously For indeed, those are instruments. They are your shields, your armors, and not just yours. By you wearing it alone, you'll protect like what's the families. Another promise of the purple scapula is this: all those who put it in the place of honor in the house will not only protect the homes uh, that it is under from the chastisement, destruction, from whatever it is to come, and the three days of darkness, and two days of darkness, but likewise all those. And all the property who will be within mm. an extraordinary promise mm -hmm. all this has been studied by the church it has not been condemned under in any circumstances but rather allowed as i mentioned earlier by the local bishop of not in 1876 so all this is permitted and can be blessed by any priest those are some of the sacramentals those are the sacramentals that marie julieni has received for instruction to propagate throughout the world in addition to this we mentioned uh, 
the three days of darkness. We are going to go as well into remedies of future plagues that are yet to come, and I will describe them as they were described to Marie Julie. Tonight, we will be very disciplined as far as time is concerned, for indeed, I think uh, uh, Monique clearly stated that we must finish exactly at 9.30, and so did Han, the executive officer, as we're making a bit of race against the clock. This will be, from what I gather, the last episode involving Marie Julie Jani for a while. Then afterwards, we will go into uh, Fatima and into the other apparition sites. But before, I did also a promise, uh, which I should have started with at the very beginning of the show. In our last show, uh, we were mentioning the attacks and the prophecies that the Roman Catholic Church would uh, fall under. You know? And it was mentioned, among other things, the Society of St. Pius X. And um, yes, at uh, the very beginning, where the Monseigneur Lefebvre uh, began to be uh, began to sep separate from the Church and declare Vatican, uh, the Second Vatican Council, as a violation, a contradiction of the dogma of the faith, uh, he was not yet destituted of his position nor excommunicated. My family in France were one of the very first ones to follow Monseigneur Lefebvre. For indeed, it was thought in my family that it could not be, we could not be judged or condemned for the unforgivable crime to love God, adore God and heaven the way our fathers did before us and before their fathers did before them. Nevertheless, I wish to clearly uh, underline the fact that I am no longer today, I've never been a member of the Society of St. Pius X, that my sympathies are with them indeed, but my sympathies and my loyalty go above and beyond anything else, the Roman Catholic and Apostolic Church that has been founded by Jesus Christ on St. Peter. No matter what errors the Church might have committed or mistakes it, may, it might be guilty of. To mm -hmm. um, detach from the Roman Catholic Church is exactly what the enemy of God wants us to do. And I, for one, although I call myself a fervent traditionalist, refuse to collaborate with the enemy of God and remain loyal to the Roman Catholic and Apostolic Church and to the institution of the pontificate. Mm. I think I was okay. clear on this matter. So therefore, okay. we come back again. <laughs> we come mm. back once again to the situation involving the messages of the Virgin Mary from Marie and what is to come. During those two days of darkness, those that will are to precede the three days of darkness, it is clearly stated that it will not be necessary for uh, those to take the same precautions as during the three days of darkness. The two days of darkness will be a, an admonition of sorts. It will be a call to the faithful to prepare for the chastisement that is to come shortly thereafter. And that will be sealed with the three days of darkness, which according to the messages of Marie-Julie Julie Jani, will eradicate all the enemies of God and three quarters of the world population and half of that of France. These words are very severe and are very grave, but they are indeed what they've been stated by Marie-Julie Jani and in other apparition sites, such as Akita, which has been formally recognized and approved, not only by the local bishop, His Excellency Bishop Ito, but by His Eminence Cardinal Hatzinger, Prefect of the Doctrine of the Faith. Yes. No one lives forever. Everyone will, be, one time or the other, will be called home, as the Americans say. Nevertheless, these particular instruments that are, big, are, are being given to you, well, I, for one, do not believe in coincidence. I sincerely, without any false attitude, believe that all those who come to see or to hear this particular show, or to read even this book, whose sole purpose was to call humanity to conversion before it's too late, it is meant for you. It is meant for you to watch, to listen, to read, to take the proper precautions to serve yourselves, not only spiritually, but physically. Indeed, as well as those of your the members of your family. No? So, if we believe, for example, in wearing a cross will protect us, or the miraculous medals approved by the Catholic Church 
Why would it be so difficult to believe that this is a son of love, of an imploring mother who is consumed with love for us, wants us to be saved? Because wearing this is indeed an act of faith. And by you wearing it, you are declaring, I am a son of God and a son of, of Mary. I believe and I place my trust and faith blindly at the feet of the cross and at the feet of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Indeed. Put it forward. Yes. I was, I was going Sorry. to say on page, on page 170 of the book, uh, there's a beautiful message by our Lord Jesus Christ who said, My children, sometime before these sinister, sinister signs are sent onto the earth, they will already feel in their hearts the effect of my justice. No. Indeed. I'll move on. I'll move on. We'll keep that for later. But the second part, but a grace of peace is reserved for faithful Christians, those who have not disregarded the warnings of heaven and who will conform their lives to them. So there is that promise not to worry that if we do what he says, what he asks, if we abide by his requests, we will be fine if we have faith. Exactly. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, likewise, uh, the heaven has uh, requested or invited the faithful uh, through Marie Julie Jani to acquire a candle that must be, quote unquote, 100% made of beeswax. Why? I do not know. Why was it that uh, our Lord asked Moses to place on the door of every Jewish family? Uh, the sign of the of the lamb with the blood of the lamb, the lamb. to protect them from the angel destructor when that was supposed to pass through Egypt. Who knows? Who can possibly read the mind of God? No. But one thing mm -hmm. is certain, if you are with God, who can be against you? Therefore, in the same manner, in the same fashion, our Lord is asking us as well uh, to acquire this 100% beeswax candle and promise that during the three days of darkness, not the two days of darkness, not to be confused, but during the three days of darkness, it could be this big, or it could be a meter tall, the particular candle will not be consumed. It will not be consumed by the flame. It will remain status quo, the same size, and will last the full three days. Mm. But have it blessed. And it preferably on the February the 2nd, which is they call it in Spanish, they call it la candelaria. No, in candle French, mass. exactly. Can the candle, candle in English is la messe mm -hmm. des de, de chandelles ou des bougies in French. Yeah. So if you can, otherwise have it blessed by your priest uh, and always keep it in a safe place. In addition to the 100% beeswax uh, candles, uh, heaven has invited humanity as well through so a, a messenger to place upon the doors and windows of your homes a particular sign. I don't know if you will be able to see it, but it's in the book and in very large, it, it occupies an entire page at the very end of the book. This is the picture of the second half with the words inscribed. The heart of Jesus is with me. Cease. The Thy kingdom come. Exactly, that's the picture. Mm -hmm. That was the picture. I didn't know how you did that, but that was exactly it. That's the one, lovely. Yeah. So it is in the, in the back of the book. Oh, this is excellent quality. And indeed, on uh, page 193, with the full explanation and the accompanying message, we are invited to have this picture blessed also by a priest and placed on every door and on every window of your home. And it promises protection of your home in addition to everything else, including the purple scapula. No. So that's another uh, sword added to the shield and to the armor that you're being offered for protection for yours and your family. This is now, a, actually, it's, uh, Xavier, it's also in the kit that Mrs. Kathleen Loney prepares. So if you, if you wish to order one of these kits, you'll have one of these pictures as well. Quite so. Ah, very important as well. Uh, heaven has asked, likewise, that we form an altar. Uh, she said, the Blessed Virgin Mary informed Marie-Julie Jeannie 
that during those three days of darkness, there will be many events uh, and that will shake the earth, one of which will be earthquakes, even within protected homes. Uh, one of the messages was that, indeed, the house, the floor, the walls, the, the entire home will shake, except on the grounds where the table and the little altar or the large altar will have been formed or will have been made containing a crucifix, a large crucifix, and a picture uh, or a statuette, uh, holy statuettes, pictures principally of the holy family. No? Uh, to Father Michel Rodrigue, the same thing was asked. And the candle. And the candle, naturally. So there should be on, on your altar a crucifix, a picture of the holy or a statuette of the holy family, and indeed the holy candle of beeswax. So the promise was indeed everything will shake except that particular table where all these particular objects will be placed and presented. So that comes about all the particular shields, armors, swords that you're being offered. During those three days of darkness, we will be called to constant prayer, particularly of the Holy Rosary, and likewise of any other Pieta books or other prayer books that you might be able to get your hands on. There is a remarkable book of prayers uh, written by uh, Father Padre Pio. I know that Ron Ray, extraordinarily enough, uh, is publishing right mm -hmm. now with uh, uh, Monique's assistance a super book of prayers, which is called Marie, uh, Monique. Oh, now you got me. <laughs> I don't have the title, but it's going to be Deliverance Prayers and Prayers of Protection. Yeah. I think I have it here. It's another Pieta book. It's called Pieta of the Apocalypse. Oh, that's the first one. Yes, that's the first yes. one. We're it's working on a second. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that particular book uh, will be available. Monique will be able to tell you more along with Ron. But uh, they're working on this, uh, the propagation of this book. Extraordinary. I, I saw it. It's uh, beautifully done. So the important thing is this. And at the end of the book, there is also a series of other prayers that I've added that also were taught to Marie Julie Janine for those times and for others, no? But the important thing is that you pray and that you place all your trust into God. Those three days of darkness will be something absolutely ghastly in the sense that you will hear abominations from outside, people banging on the door, the windows. You will be frightened. This will be the fright of your life. And it will be a time when, according to Marie Julie Janine, hell will be completely emptied. It will be a time of purification of the earth, of the world, of humankind. Where, as I mentioned earlier, with the cradle of gravity, three quarters of humanity's population will perish. To that effect, if you hear familiar voices outside during those three days of darkness, imploring you, begging you to open the door, do not under any circumstances do so. You must be completely plunged and devoted to prayer and to the people that are around you. You must ignore any, everything else. When the three days of darkness will cease, and I believe it should be three days and two nights, if memory serves, then there will be a sign that will make everyone understand that the three days of darkness are over. And the day, the first day, of the renaissance, of the rebirth of humanity begins. No? Now, it will not be easy. Once the three days of darkness are over, the world will change drastically. It will not be recognized. And the earth itself will not be as it was before. It will take three full years, according to the prophecies given to Marie Jolichani, for the world to be able to grow normally. Uh, food, vegetation, it will take three good years for the world to come back to normalcy, to a state very much like what it used to be. Mm -hmm. One thing is that the Catholic Church will be reborn. There will be a new Christian society, and the enemies of God will have perished. Those who will not still believe that would have survived will soon thereafter convert. Now, as we mentioned before, countries, entire countries of, of the remnants of what they, mm -hmm. what's left will convert to Catholicism one of which being England, will finally come back to uh, the bosom of the Roman Catholic Church and others. So these particular instruments 
are nothing short than a better gift. And we have to accept them with gratefulness and faith. These have absolutely no value if your only purpose is to survive and still have no faith and have not converted. In addition to the three days of darkness, to the two days of darkness, and to a particular moment that will even precede that, but in only one region of France, again in Britain, it is said that uh, there will be other forms of chastisements, such as diseases, plagues, that will also be a major contributor to the de death and um, disappearance of many a great many millions around the world. One of these particular uh, diseases in French is called um, the, the plague that burns. You know? And uh, I haven't explained to Marie-Julie Janie that this particular plague will be very severe. Uh, there will be no known cure to man to save one from this disease and it will be extraordinarily contagious. It will be airborne. And just upon getting too close from the di diseased body, you will catch it and perish sometime, shortly thereafter. However, once again, for the divine mercy of our Lord, a particular uh, remedy was offered to us to be saved from this deadly plague. No? And it might sound somewhat odd, but the plague will be stopped through a particular leaf called the hawthorn, a very common, ordinary uh, plant. It should be the leaf itself without the wooden stem. The Virgin Mary has given very clear instructions on how to uh, apply and consume this particular remedy. Immediately, immediately, when you notice the first effects of these burning plagues, which will affect the skin, obviously will give the impression of the victim to have a terrible burn. You will see patches of red. Immediately thereafter, when it becomes too late, uh, with a black and yellow center, it will attack the movement of the tongue, the brain, the thinking process of a person. And when you heart. start feeling a bigger part. And the heart. And the heart. Mm -hmm. And also high blood pressure will give you very quick high blood pressure. But it will be an accumulation of things that will precipitate the victim to a demand, his demise. To save oneself from this particular disease, the Virgin Mary invites us to take leaves or a leaf of hawthorn, to boil water and to place it in boiling water or to place them in boiling water so as to make a form of a sort of a tea and to plate, place a, um, a top on the pot where you would have placed those particular leaves in the boiling water and wait for 14 minutes before withdrawing the boiling water spot out of the fire. Now, 13 minutes, not 15 minutes. The Blessed Virgin was very specific. 14 minutes. Then, once this is done, you can put it in a container, a bottle, filter it even if you wish, through a coffee filter. This particular liquid will be your physical salvation. If you take it in time, the Blessed Virgin Mary was very specific. If you take it too late, it will not save you. It will simply leave you. So you must take it early enough for you to be saved. And it must be applied and or consumed three times a day. The times are irrelevant, insignificant. But it must be consumed and or applied on the body three times a day until all the effects have gone and, have, and are forgotten. Now, if it's taken too late, it will not save the victim. It will simply alleviate uh, him from the suffering of the, of the disease. Again, it's an extraordinary remedy. And again, why not believe it? There is always those apostles of the contrary who will say, oh, that sounds very much like magic or Hollywood rubbish. What about the waters of Lourdes? Is that Hollywood? Is that magic? No. Mm -hmm. It is an extraordinary fact that I've saved also hundreds of thousands of sick people who have gone there in pure faith. So I ask you yet again, if we're not able to go and doing this particular times to laws, why would this be ridiculous? Why would this not be credible? It is another sign of faith. And we are called, if we want to save those we love, 
or even ourselves from this particular ghastly disease, this is what we are offered. Protect ourselves and those we love. It would be fireworks. I'm no, sorry. it's well like <laughs> actually I thought about one of the kids. <laughs> is that Without the word. Diwali fireworks. I'm so sorry. I think the, the viewers have all children and family of them also. I uh, I feel very comfortable. So to come back to the, to uh, this, this particular subject, which is a serious one, I yeah. I pray that all of you will take this more seriously and will accept and listen to these messages with gratefulness, for it is indeed nothing short of a treasure, of a display of God's mercy towards us. It's exactly the same mercy that he displayed through his first emissary, the Blessed Virgin Mary, in 1858 in Lourdes, in a little, um, absolutely obscure, filthy little grotto of Massabiel in the city of, in the town of Lourdes, to the little shepherd of, or to the little girl of Bernadette Subiru. This is the same thing, but in different times and in different places. Mm -hmm. The burning plague. There will be other uh, plagues as well that will tax humanity. There will be other diseases which will harm humanity and other effects that will hit mankind. Okay. One of them, uh, likewise, the Blessed Virgin Mary mentioned that uh, there will be future plagues that can be healed, likewise, through a particular prayer. She stated on September the 13th, 1880, souls will be protected and preserved who will write down these, word and re these words and repeat them during the time when these violent plagues will break out, causing great damage. These words written on one piece of paper can suffice for an entire family. This particular prayer you can wear on your in your wallet or wherever you like to wear states the following. It's all in the book. Oh, very pure virgin, you who have always carried and who still carries the good and just odor of purity, take away from us this disgusting smell, send it back to that place where we shall never be able to smell it again by the chaste smell of your holy purity. Amen. Some of these diseases, the Blessed Virgin Mary informed Marie Julie Chani, will cause such a stench that the smell of the stench itself will be a propagator of the disease itself. So that is why this is particular state. There is another, there are other remedies for unknown uh, diseases as well, which we are recommended to use. For, for instance, uh, the St. John's uh, wort uh, flower is recommended for violent mental troubles, chest pain, and violent headaches. Now, now all these, you must uh, take great care not to take them or ingest them without first seeing a doctor in these normal times. These particular remedies are meant for extraordinary times, particularly the times of chastisements. Now, during the war that is to come, which we've discussed before, and during the ch chastisement times that will precede the two and then the three days of darkness, which will be the last uh, chastisement that will seal the entire period of time that we've been foretold, forewarned about. Now, there is another one that is quite remarkable. There are quite a few. There is another one which, which states that for a known disease, um, if you place a drop of holy water on the poor souls reached by the affliction of unknown diseases that will attack the mind, heart and the mouth and the tongue, uh, those will be alleviated or possibly healed. You know? uh, in uh, one particular message, it was stated to Marie-Julie Jani, my little loving and beloved souls, against the great calamities, you will put the medal of my sacred heart in a glass of water or a spoonful as you wish. You will invoke my adorable heart. I will relieve you of all attacks. I will console you in your pains and in your sorrow. So what medals contains the sacred heart of our Lord, Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. and of the sacred, immaculate heart of Mary? That particular medal is the, is the miraculous medal, which uh, I think I have a picture here. You, you shown one a few moments ago, Monique. I have it here, and I have it in large picture. This particular medal, and uh, I'm ever so sorry to make you wait, there we are. Um, no. 
exactly that's the one as you can see on the right side of your screen you will see two hearts at the bottom of the large m those are the immaculate heart of mary and the sacred heart of christ now if you were to put this particular miraculous medal inside a glass of water and place it as instructed uh, on those two souls that are afflicted by those diseases they will be alleviated from uh, the pains and the sorrows of this disease likewise if you were to place this particular water twice blessed by the sacred heart and the immaculate heart of mary for this particular blessed sacramental if you put it on food should it be poisoned should it be contaminated should it be unhealthy to consume you will be able to consume it without any harm happening to you some day after there are yet there is still more we are this is far from being the only remedies protections that we are being offered by by heaven there is a particular uh, most controversial remedy as well that is being offered to us and that is the one that involves a particular prayer that is to be inscribed on a piece of paper no? now mrs uh, kathleen loney as i mentioned earlier has come up with a brilliant concept that concept involves uh inscribing and she's done this with a non-toxic ink on rice paper that melts on the tongue no that particular prayer which is i believe says all crooks as ave or cook and beg your pardon i had it all marked down and somehow i am not able to find it but the fact of the matter is it was said that whenever any particular unknown diseases were to afflict you uh, you are to, you're called to consume this little piece of paper it could be regular paper i've done it i've swallowed it many times uh just as a test doesn't harm at all but this particular uh, paper that was conceived by mrs uh, lone is brilliant rice paper melts on top of your tongue and it's actually quite mm -hmm. pleasant and the ink she uses to write in miniature letters that particular prayer is non-toxic brilliant and i will find the prayer that's the last thing i do so bear with me if you would a prayer Okay, great. Right. Well, I will find it later. But um, is, it, is it the Crook Save prayer? It is the Crooks. It's a short version, but yes, it is. Okay. Indeed. But the Crook Save prayer goes as such: I salute you, I adore you, I embrace you, and ah, and the remedy that is to be written on the paper is. O oh, Jesus, vanquisher of death, save us. O oh, Cruz Ave, Spes Unica. And that is the prayer that is on the rice paper. I repeat once more. O oh, Jesus, vanquisher of death, save us. O oh, Cruz Ave, Spes Unica. So this will be written. Me, Sister Lonely has those particular uh, sheets of uh, rice paper with inscription written in non toxic ink she will be shipping it to you upon request and in the book has an email address which i acquired with her permission and she's waiting for your uh, emails again i want to i cannot stress this enough mrs lone is an exemplary admirable lady who does this and sell those things at cost she makes no profit her ambition is simply to help those who ask for help and cannot help themselves so uh, that is what i invite you to, to do in addition of it all, there are other plans that are supposed that as well in the book described to alleviate from headaches, such as the violet flower or from uh, tachycardia or high blood pressure. Nothing that would be life threat. The most, um, the one diseases that was mentioned and that is indeed life threatening is unquestion unquestionably the burning plague. And you have now here on this particular show, uh, the remedy to protect yourselves likewise during the three days of darkness we were told you can place it on um, or before the three days of darkness rather you can put it on sick animals for this disease will be contagious not from man to man but from animals to animals and you will see 
part of um, the first symptoms on the animals by seeing large amounts of liquid or water-like liquids being produced from the border of their eyes, you know, and it will be like a torrent. You are invited to place the remnants of the used uh, leaf of hawthorn upon the wounded animals or suffering animals. They are supposed to protect them as well. You know? Yes, their eyes, the outside of their eyes will blacken, apparently. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So these are some of the particular remedies. Those are the, some of the sacramentals that are being offered. Um, Mrs. Lone will be able to put, produce all these, including the medals and cups. Yes. And also for col cholera, for cholera, the hawthorn, the, the cholera. humble hawthorn as well. In fact, exactly. it's from the hawthorn. It's from the hawthorn that the crown of thorns came, apparently. So it's interesting. It's an interesting coincidence. Yes. That's not necessarily uh, it, so. Yes, that's. Uh, yeah. I, I I heard the same story. I think it's from uh, from the same family. Yes, from the hawthorn that the thorns were taken. A different mm -hmm. family that comes from a, that particular plant, that family of the hawthorn in uh, in the Middle East. Quite, quite yeah. so. That's quite so. So the so, one that we're that asked to. The one that we're asked to get is the white hawthorn, the, the yes. leaves of the white hawthorn. Exactly. There are pictures in the, unfortunately they're black and white, uh, but uh, that's the one, that's the way my, uh, Austin Macaulay decided to publish them. But you can easily find them uh, on the internet. You will see what they look like. It's a very common plant, but uh, I invite you to get them as quickly as you can for our Lord, Jesus Christ, mm -hmm told Marie Julie Jeanne to do so as of, as quickly as you can, for the time will come when people will look for them and there will be none available. So do not twist. It doesn't have to be for Mrs. Ma Mrs. Lonely. Acquire them in, through any means you can, but do acquire them and they do not need to be blessed. Simply get them. If you want to have them blessed, better yet. Better yet. But uh, there was no particular instructions about those being blessed or needing to be blessed. But I invite you nevertheless to do it. Have everything blessed. There is another matter, another instrument that the Blessed Virgin Mary is recommended, Marie Julie Jeanne, uh, to, to use, and to all of us, of course, holy, holy water. Uh, you can find them in every parish or in most parishes, or if not, take a bottle, bring them to the priest and ask him to bless them accordingly. They will bless the holy water, and the Blessed Virgin Mary in heaven is recommending all the faithful to use the holy water on everything that you have at home, every holy instrument, the crosses, the medals, the doors, the windows, your house, and to do it as often as you can and to keep a good reserve for the times of tribulations, the three days of darkness, the two days of darkness, and for what is to come. Be prepared. Mm -hmm. More important than food, more important than anything else, are those instruments. For matters of food, it was told, we were told that indeed, for those who will not be able to be prepared on time, God will permit miracles for the multiplications of food inside the homes. So again, a matter of faith. Abandon yourself to, to, to God. In one particular message from our Lord to Marie Julie Jeanne, our Lord Jesus Christ told her, for all those who will place blindly their faith and place their safety in my hands, they will oblige me to do so in accordance with their request. You will oblige me to protect you if you place all your faith in me. I know it's not going to be difficult, particularly when you will hear all sorts of obscenities and rubbish and insults and horrors and God knows what unholy unholiness you will witness. No, But you must really cross blades with yourself. It will be a mental gymnastic for you to maintain as much as you can your calm and to try to concentrate in prayer. Concentrate on those that are around you, on those you love. Think of them. And maintain your calm. For your from your calmness, uh, others will draw their own. No. Um, well, in fact, in the book it says I I can't find it now. I I marked it, but where our Lord said the the stronger the more we trust in Him, the stronger will be the the stronghold. So we really have to. This this is the time to practice that faith, that complete surrender in God. The indeed. more we trust, the more we surrender, the more protected we will be. So. There is another matter that is of the utmost importance. When the three days of darkness will begin, and the two days of darkness will indeed begin, 
we are given for instructions under no circumstances to open the door or to let our curiosity take the best of us and look or peek outside the window. We are forbidden to look outside in the times of the three and the two and the three days of darkness. Those who will disobey, according to the messages of our Lord, to Marie Julie Janie, will die instant instantaneously on the spot. This is extremely important to remember. One must not be curious, must not open the door, must not open the windows. You must remain in complete calmness or try and pray. Dedicate yourself to God. Invoke mercy if you feel you need to. But place all your faith into God. And that brings another matter. Conversion of the heart. You will remember that in past episodes it was said that Marie-Julie Janie and others did mention that it is time to convert while there is still time. What is the meaning of that? Is there a time when it will be too late? People will want to convert, but they won't be able to? The answer to that question is yes. Because in the time when all these events will take place, people will try to convert, will ask forgiveness, will beg mercy, but for all the wrong reasons, it will be to save this. Not to save this or that. It is important that conversion be sincere. As Marie Jolie mentioned it before, one cannot fool God. A conversion, a change of life, a dedication of your life, your soul, your heart, must be done to God, to the sacred heart of Christ, to the immaculate heart of Mary. For indeed, the version has come to, to tell the children of Fatima that it is the will of God that through her immaculate heart, through her, the triumph of her immaculate heart, we may adore and glorify the triumph of the sacred heart of Jesus Christ. It's the choice of God. No. The same one, the same way that God decided to entrust on Saint John the Baptist the mission as well to propagate um, the mission to calling people to convert, to receive the baptism of water before the baptism, uh, baptism of fire, which was to be given by John the Baptist's cousin, Jesus Christ. Same thing comes here. The Blessed Virgin Mary, whether it is from Marie Julie or others, is the new Saint John the Baptist who has come to come to give us the new baptism of the Spirit, which is a complement of the um, baptism of fire of Jesus Christ. She hasn't come to add anything to what Christ has given us through the Holy Gospel. She has only come to tell us, do what my son tells you. Re she's come to remind us to do what must be done and without any form of uh, acceptation or compromise with with new realms, with new uh, fashions, with new ways of thinking or discerning God. The God does not change us with society, with fads, or with fashions. God is an absolute value. Like mathematics, two and two will always be four. God will always be God. His teachings will be his teachings. And whether the immense majority of a democratic synod of synodality tells us that it is time for the church to change, to change, it is not. Only God decides. The kingdom of God, his church, is not a democracy. We mentioned this before as well. It is a monarchy. Christ is our Lord, is our king. The Blessed Virgin Mary is our queen. So once again, we are being given uh, the chance to become what we call in French Le Chevalier Servant de Marie, the knight in shining armor, the Blessed Virgin Mary of God, by accepting to wear upon ourselves those at this armor that is supposed to protect us and those that are close to us. These shields, which is supposed to push us to propagate these particular messages to our neighbors for their well-being, for their spiritual conversion and for their bodily salvation. And finally, we are called as well uh, to maintain the church alive. For indeed, the Catholic Church is not all Rome. The Catholic Church is principally you, me, your children that are probably at this time are in bed or should be. That's what the Catholic Church is all about. We are. We must also take these messages extremely calmly with, uh, without being becoming any sort of uh, exuberance uh, or fanatic uh, person. Our credibility 
lies in maintaining a cold hand. In showing the example, I never condemn it. One of the principal messages of the verse by even from Marie Julie Chani is mercy of heart, even towards those who commit errors, who fall victim to heresy, and who are our enemies. We must pray for them and their conversion. And above all, we must pray for the church. Especially, we must pray for the Holy uh, Catholic Magisterium, for Pope Francis, and for all the holy cardinals and not so holy cardinals. In a special way, I would like to invite all your uh, viewers to pray particularly for the Church of China, which has been betrayed, which has been forgotten, and which has been over, uh, of, has been subject to an oversight that is unforgiven. But there are heroes today over there that are fighting, that are helping their fellow brothers to maintain the faith alive. I invite all of you to pray for his eminence, Cardinal Zen, who is going through a martyrdom that has no name. Mm. And for all those who have committed the error, uh, the, un the forgivable error, uh, to maybe abandon him or not support him as they should have, let's pray for those who have done so. For, as Christ said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. No, we cannot pretend to be Catholics and not follow the teachings of our Lord. Marie Julie was a perfect example of such a, a statement. So these are the principal protections that we've been given. The events that are to come is, are also announced through a revelation to conscience, uh, illumination of conscience, a warning, el aviso, like they said in Spanish, the warning, and uh, a new Pentecost, like uh, the remarkable Father Michel Rodrigue would say mm -hmm. uh, and has said in the past. Marie-Julie Jani makes one very brief reference to the future Pentecost, to this morning to come, where she clearly explains that every man will be able to see the state of his soul, the way God sees it himself. It will be a last Pentecost, the last chance for people to convert out of the heart, to realize what they've done wrong, and to realize that it, it is time to correct this deviate, deviate path you know, and abandon the mediocrity of, of one's life. Uh, in addition of it all, as we mentioned here before, uh, refugees will be set throughout the world. I mentioned it before. Uh, Brittany will be the most safest place according to the revelation she, Marie Julie Jeannie has received. Furthermore, she was told that the levels of the oceans, uh, including in the Atlantic, will rise up to 35 meters. I regret that uh, Austin Macaulay has not made a better picture, topographical pictures I took of uh, Brittany in normal stand for satellite pictures and through a simulation I've made on computer showing what Brittany would look uh, with all the level of the oceans risen up to 35 meters high. Remarkably enough, Brittany will, be, will not be so severely touched. And we are invited, for those who can, if they, can, if they want to seek refuge, to go to central Britain and not mm -hmm. to be too close from the border, from the shores, you know, and to avoid the northern part of Brittany, which unfortunately will be touched severely by the burning plague and other diseases. You know? mm -hmm. I mentioned before as well, it might sound somewhat repetitive, but that I plan on going uh, to Brittany in the course of next year. Oh, by the way, this is a picture of Brittany. And this is under normal, normal circumstance. I will show you what Brittany will look with 35 meters, or actually 40 meters, with the recent waters of the Atlantic. Can you see well? Yes, yes, we can see. You can see in lighter blue on the southern, southern shores, the part that will be submerged under water. But you will see that all in all, Brittany, after and before will hardly be damaged or touched by these events that are, that are yet to come. So, in one particular message, uh, it was told, the Virgin Mary told Marie-Julie Janie that Brittany will be like a giant uh, tree with multitude of branches, which uh, uh, endless and countless birds from across the world will come to seek refuge. I'm sure you found the passage, did you? Which passage? I'm sorry? The, pas the passage of, uh, I have it here. 
The passage goes as such. Ah, oh, there it is, I believe. I had it all prepared, there it is. Okay, in the, this was uh, to a, a mystic, a French priest, who Father Pio recognized as a saint in France with the same mystical powers that he himself was endowed. And Father Pell mentioned the following. In the future, when you see that this frightful time is near, take leave to Brittany on the western coast of France, but go to the center, far from the coast, because there, the coast, will collapse. This global scourge will begin, will begin on a cold winter's night and with a terrifying roar of divine thunder and a natural sound filled with demonic screaming that will be heard by the entire world. It will be the voice of sin that terrified men and which will be heard on that night. This was done and given to, to a particular message he received in 1945 and very much in accordance with uh, the prophecy given to Marie Julie Chantel. So next year, uh, I intend to go to Brittany with my family. We, as you could say, as a scout uh, party to survey and see if indeed some sort of land uh, can be possibly purchased. And uh, I know that there are villages that are sold altogether with homes that have been uh, left and that are still for sale. So, à la grâce de Dieu, uh, we will still survey and see if indeed Something perhaps can be organized with our friends, colleagues, and uh, open the doors to those who are seeking in regret. So this gives you a general idea of the overall message of the Blessed Virgin May to Marie-Julie Janie. We have about, I believe, 15, 20 minutes left. There is a particular message. Yes. I have just a couple of points. I, I found the quote about not getting upset. Our Lord said, you must not be upset with those who do not want to believe, for they know not what they do. But woe to those who laugh or who allow themselves to judge before informing themselves. So, Yes, this is also and, very important. Right. We cannot judge others. Um, the, other, the other quote, actually, it's, it's, a, it's a positive one. Um, St. Michael the Archangel on September 29th, 1880 said, Today the miracles, of, the miracles of heaven are blasphemed, rejected, insulted. You, dear friends of God, you are destined to live to see accomplished great miracles, great prodig prodigies among the plagues, great justices, great calamities that the Lord has promised. You will be well protected, but observe well all that the eternal voices have commanded. So what we've discussed tonight is crucial. Get obtain these sacramentals, these herbs. Our Lord has promised to protect us if we do follow with faith. Yes. So. There is a and last message. Go ahead, I beg your pardon. I'm so sorry. There's also no, a no. prayer. Uh, there's a, a, there are a few prayers, actually. Um, our Lord mentions the rosary and also the, the precious blood, the devotion to the precious blood being very protective as well. On page 181, um, pray, is it? It's our Lord who says, pray, 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 convert and do penance. Do not fall asleep as my disciples did in the Garden of Olives, for I am very close. The anger of the Father against humankind is very great. If the prayer of the rosary and the gift of the precious blood weren't so pleasing to the Father, there would already be a misery on earth that has no name. But my mother intercedes to the Father, to me, and to the Holy Spirit. This is why God let himself be moved. Thank then my mother for the fact that humankind still lives. Honor her with the respect of a child. I gave you the example, for she is the mother of mercy. Now, Xavier, she, he, he mentions the gift of the precious blood. What does he mean by that? That is the Holy Eucharist. As you know, the Holy Eucharist is not merely just the bread. It is the, the body and blood, body and blood, in other words, for the specimen of the wine. You, know? uh, you will remember in the past episode the event when Marie-Julie was uh, drinking 
actual blood coming from a crucifix. You know? right. And uh, that particular incident was very shocking to me, I have to confess. But then afterwards, upon careful and serene uh, reflection, I realized it's exactly, the, exactly the same blood that is that we drink when the priest consecrated the wines. Exactly. No difference. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, the significance of this message. There is a large message that uh, our Lord has given uh, through Marie Julie Zani of the utmost importance. It's, uh, it's of the utmost importance, I believe. And one of these principal missions that uh, these particular podcast channels have is that to do what maybe some prelates should have done and have not. And this message is now meant for all those who are lending an ear, a willing and faithful ear. With your permission, this is a message from our Lord, given, I think, done, uh, given in 1938, I believe. Men have not listened to the words pronounced by my most holy mother in Fatima. Woe to those who do not listen now to my words. Men have not understood the language of war. Many men live in sin, very often in the sin of impurity. Woe to those who seduce the innocent. You must not be upset with those who do not want to believe, like you said, honey. for they know not what they do. But woe to those who laugh or who allow themselves to judge before informing themselves. The frequent apparitions of my good mother are the results of my mercy. I sent her with the strength of the Holy Spirit to forewarn men and to save that which must be saved. I must let happen that which must on the whole world, so that many souls be saved, which otherwise would have been lost. For all the crosses, for all the sufferings, and for all that is still to come, that will be worse yet, you must not curse my Father from heaven, but thank him. It is the work of my love. You will understand later on. I must come in my justice, because men have not recognized the time of my grace. The measure of sin is at its fullest, but to my faithful, no harm will come. Mm -hmm. I shall come to the sinful world in a terrible rumble of thunder on a cold winter night. A very hot wind from the south will precede this storm and a heavy grail will heat the earth. From massive red fire clouds, devastating lightning will zigzag inflaming and reducing everything to ashes. The air will be filled with toxic gases and mortal vapors, which, within cyclones, which will reap apart the work of daring pride, of madness, and the city of nights, will of power. This is a clear reference to Paris. Humankind will have to recognize that, that above it, is a will that will make its audacious plans collapse like a castle of cards. The angel destroyer will destroy forever the lives of those who will have devastated my kingdom, the kingdom of God. You, souls who profane the name of the Lord, guard yourselves from mocking me. Guard yourselves from the sin against the spirit. When the angel of death will mow the bad weed with the cutting sword of my justice, hell will then project itself with anger and tumult against the just and above all against the consecrated souls in order to try to destroy them through a frightful terror. I want to protect you, my faithful ones, and give you the signs which will indicate the beginning of the judgment. When by a cold winter night thunder will rumble so hard as to make mountains shake, then close very quickly all doors and windows of your house. Your eyes must not profane the terrible events with curious looks. Gather around the crucifix. Place yourselves under the protection of my most holy mother. Do not let any doubt take over your involving your safety. The more trusting you will be, the more impenetrable will the rampart, rampart be. I want to surround you with protection. Burn blessed candles and recite the chaplet. Persevere for three days and two nights. The following night, 
the terror will calm down. After the horror of this long obscurity, with the upcoming rising day, the sun will appear in all its brightness and warmth. There will be a great devastation. I, your God, shall have purified everything. The survivors must thank the Holy Trinity for its protection. Magnificent will my kingdom of peace be, and my name will be invoked and blessed from sunrise until sunset. Pray, 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 convert and do penance. Do not fall asleep as my disciples did in the Garden of Olives, for I am very close. The anger of the Father against hum humankind is very great. If the prayer of the rosary and the gift of the precious blood weren't so pleasing to the Father, there would already be a misery on earth that has no name. But my mother intercedes to the Father, to me, and to the Holy Spirit. This is why God lets himself be moved. Thank then my mother for the fact that humankind still lives. Honor her with the respect of a child. I gave you the example for she is the mother of mercy. Never forget to renew continuously the gift of the precious blood. My mother begs me unceasingly and with her many penitent and expiatory souls. I cannot refuse her anything. It is therefore because of my mother and because of my elected that these days have been shortened. Be consoled. You who honor my precious blood, nothing will happen to you. I shall inspire my representative to place continuously in order the sacrifice of my precious blood and the veneration of my mother. Would some of my priests like to be more Pope-like than the Pope himself? They will crucify me, for they will delay the works of my mother. Pray a great deal for the favorites of my heart, the priest. The time will come when my priest will understand all this. This message is one of the deepest um, that our Lord has ever given, Marie-Julie Jani. And since we only have about five minutes left, would you give me permission uh, to read the last message of our Lord, it's a short one this time, given to Marie-Julie Jani in 1882, Monique? Absolutely. Go ahead. Upon the decided day for my writings to be sent to all my servants and to my victims to indicate to them my hour, and the hour of the miracles against this call, nothing will stand. Mm. I shall protect and I shall, and I shall keep those who will be forced to wait a short time to find refuge under the divine tree of the cross. The hour will be sent to all the family of the cross whose destiny is to be protected. This hour will come before the paths of the earth are closed before the enemy is engaged within the vast spaces of all of France to conquer it and to have it perish. Message of our Lord on July 1882. Do remember, as a conclusion, that although France is used mostly as a point of reference in the messages entrusted to Marie-Julie Jani, it is meant as the church's eldest daughter to be looked as a compass in the sense that when we know these things will happen in France, we know that they will happen throughout the world shortly thereafter. Again, I'm afraid, as it is customary with me, I've been somewhat long-winded, and <laughs> I apologize for having monopolized the phone. I want to tell our viewers that there, there are still more remedies in the book. Please get a copy of this book. We couldn't go through all of them tonight, but it's worthwhile getting this book, to, just to have it handy. Every family should have it. Um, if we can take a few questions, Xavier, just really quickly, and then we'll close with a prayer. Um, some are asking about the Hawthorne, and they're asking how much of the Hawthorne do you need? And also, um, can they be dried leaves? Yes, and uh, absolutely, they can be dry leaves. What must be taken out is the wooden uh, stem. And how much? It's very simple. The, there was no 
uh, amount uh, described in the messages entrusted to Marie Julie The only thing that was entrusted with utmost accuracy is the fact that this particular uh, Hawthorne leaves must be placed in boiling water for a period of exactly 14 minutes and must be placed with, uh, with a tap or a cap above the, the pot or the pan where the stem is being boiled so that no smoke can escape. Then afterwards, after 14 minutes, not 13 or 15, precisely 14, take out the pan or the pot with boiling water. You will have now a sort of a tea. It can be one leaf or it can be a multitude. It's up to you. I do believe that God is not going to say, mm, blast, uh, you only put uh, one leaf in this water and you make uh, six gallons of, of, of this tea. Mm. Don't you think you exaggerate a little bit? No, that doesn't work. Next. No, I don't think so. That for a moment. <laughs> God has a sense of humor. That's for certain. My children are proof of that, but uh, not that much of a humor. I think that God, more than anything else, uh, is a God of mercy. If you just follow this uh, doctrine uh, with faith, with love, with hope and uh, trust, you will be, you will, the promise of the Virgin Mary will become a reality and you will be protected. Just even if it is one leaf, do it and uh, make as much of this holy tea as possible and use it. I would even recommend everyone before applying it on the body or consuming it well, by mouth to make a prayer, maybe three prayers. Maybe the Pater Noster, the Our Father, the Hail Mary and the Glory Be, and the uh, uh, O Crux Salve, or uh, Ave O Crux Salve. You know? All the prayers mm -hmm. are in the book. The principal purpose of this is simple. Save people as much as, I, as we could. I did this in, simply for one principal reason. To say thank you. Thank you to God for the two children I have, for the family I had since a I was a child, and for being given the chance to uh, be aware of this, to meet extraordinary people in my life, people that I've come to love with all my heart and that i come to uh, admire, and to... Uh, to and to respect, it's a remarkable uh, journey, which I invite you to join me with. Voilà. Xavier, really quickly, we'll slip in one last question. Uh, as many as you would. There's a comment. Don't some people use Hawthorne for witchcraft? I've heard that before. People are thinking maybe she's a witch because she's using herbs and things like that. What do you say about that? I say I have no idea. And if it is true, I'm certain they also drink water. So do I. Doesn't make me a, a witch for because I drink water. They will use some aspects of the of la daily life that we do. So it doesn't mean anything at all. Um, so I do not know. Honestly, I do not uh, um, <laughs> go into the circles of uh, sat uh, satanic worshippers or witches or uh, <laughs> or those sort of things. Those kind of people, frankly, do not interest me. I pray for their souls, but uh, this kind of practice, I try to keep away as much as I can. So if they do, good or bad for them, I'm royally indifferent. All I'm not indifferent about is the fact that the Blessed Virgin Mary asked us to do this, to save ourselves, and to have everything blessed by a priest. So mm -hmm. I don't believe for one moment that any apparition site that invites people to leave uh, the Via Crucis, to remember what our Lord has gone through, to leave and to receive the Holy Eucharist, to use the sacraments of the Catholic Church that calls us constantly, constantly to confess, to try to lead good lives, to be baptized by the Roman Catholic Church and to pray for the Pope can possibly come from the enemy. That is exactly what the enemy wants us to think. The enemy is trying by all means to make the Church implode from within. I, for one, will not collaborate nor play in that game. I will fight to keep the church Catholic, Roman, and apostolic, exactly as our Lord intended it to be from day one. I hope that answer is satisfactory to your auditor. It does. Thank you so much, Xavier, for this episode. It's been wonderful to speak with you about all this. We will be back next week with Xavier again, on and we'll discuss another uh, wonderful apparition. Not sure which one yet, but we'll figure it out. Maybe if you leave us a comment about which one you'd like to hear about that's in the book, we'll consider it. So um, in the meantime, we would like to finish with a prayer.
and I thought it would be appropriate to pray for the, inter for the intercession and beatification of Marie-Julie Jaini. So please join me in praying. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. O little sister, Marie-Julie, thou whose admirable goodness did not cease here below to be compassionate towards our miseries and to console our griefs, Thou whose untirable charity welcomes all our requests and makes us all hope in the goodness of God. Now that thou art close to thy good mother of heaven, listen again to our prayers and ask her to draw for us in the all open great heart of her son, the adorable treasures that she has made thee catch a glimpse of. A divine, O divine heart of Jesus, heart of love and infinite mercy. O immaculate heart, sweet maternal heart of Mary, thou who art but one same heart and whose richness is inexhaustible. Grant us, we beseech thee, all the graces of which we have need by the intercession of the loving soul of Marie-Julie, who knew how to pray to thee so well that thou could not refuse her anything. And accomplish, O all-powerful God, that we may soon invoke her for the conversion of sinners, the triumph of the Holy Church, and peace in the world, under the title Blessed, that she appears to have so well merited by her love of souls and her love of the cross. Amen. In the name of the Amen. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. God bless you, everyone, and join us again next week. Take care. Thank you.